Hello and welcome to Daily Spark TV, where we want to enlighten, inspire, and empower you. Well, today we are talking about fostering. We're talking about being a foster parent, and we do have an advocate here with us today. So her name is Tanya Gregory. She has been a member of senior staff. She has served on several boards and speaks publicly in the school system, as well as with women's meetings and internationally. She has been a minister since 2004. Tanya grew up in a home that had 22 foster <laughs> children. So yes, she is indeed an in-house specialist. She has also had some personal experience in her adulthood and life as well with doing that. Now, she has also written a book called A Natural Child in a Foster Care System, a full-time story that is ever evolving. And I can't wait to talk to her about the foster care system. Welcome, Tanya, to the show. Thank you, Dr. Angela. I'm really glad to be here. I'm excited to get the word out. Yes. Now, before we talk about that, I want to talk a little bit more about you, if you would. Sure. Now, you've been a minister since yes. 2004. <laughs> what made you decide to go into the ministry? Well, you know, it's one of those things where man does not call you, God does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was actually, I began itinerating for some of my mentors many years prior to that. And it was just, it evolved into, I needed to become a minister to make that happen. And I felt the Lord just really tugging on my heart. My husband confirmed it. It was like, okay, we're taking this step. Yeah. So, and when I received my license, I was in tears because that's a responsibility that I take very seriously. Of course. Yeah. And I love how the fact that you are working in ministry and scripture does remind us that we are supposed to take care of the widowed and the orphaned. Yes. So that is amazing yeah. that you followed in that calling and you didn't let that go to the wayside. So bravo for, I, for walking in that calling. Some I people put it off. It. Mm -hmm. we, we do. And mm -hmm. not, I meet people. My ministry is building people. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I meet people that have the calling and they'll even say, well, you know, I know I'm supposed to do this, but and it's like, okay, so what's holding you back? Are you praying and right. asking God is now the timing mm -hmm. and it's him holding you back because it's not the timing mm -hmm. or have you just set it by the wayside and you're not pursuing what God's called you to do. Right. And so it's wonderful and every situation is different. Mm -hmm. And so it's mm -hmm. exciting to see them recognize their own calling and the gift within them because everybody has a gift within them. Not all of us have walked out in it. And it's the same with caring with foster children. Mm -hmm. Some people are truly gifted mm -hmm. to care for children, to advocate for children, to be in those positions, to do something in there. And speaking of the foster care system, I think that many people are familiar with the term foster parent. They know that there is a fostering system, but many times we don't understand the intricacies. We don't really know what it means. We've just heard of it. Can you explain a little bit more? What is the foster care system? Gladly. And you're right. So many people don't realize what all it is. And each state and county have a little different variety in some of the different programs that are available. So I encourage people, check the state you're in and the county for the details of it. But the first place that a person is communicating an issue or a problem that they see in a family that perhaps is a neighbor or a child they care for if they're a teacher. They call either the police or CPS, Child Protective Services, which can be called DCS and you know many different right. names depending. And then DCS or that Child Protective Service comes in, they talk to the child, they look at the situation, determine if removing the child children, whichever it is, is necessary. Mm -hmm. If it is, then they're taken and put into the placement agency's care. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones that place them into homes for emergency care, full-time care, mm -hmm. and whatever is needed at that time. Mm -hmm. 
Now, there used to be a time where if you wanted to be a foster care parent, you could not be one, two, three. You could not be a single parent. You could not be a woman, okay. so on and so forth. <laughs> right. You, you see right. where I'm going with that. Right. Are those rules still in effect? Are, are we still dealing with that or has it opened up? And kind of loosened it, a little. That's a really good question because a lot of people wonder that. And it really has opened up. Mm -hmm. The thing that they look for, especially with a single person situation, whether male or female, is what is your support system? Mm -hmm. It is vital to have that support. And I honestly believe that that's why it took so long to go from only couples to opening that door. Mm -hmm. Because if the child is sick and both people work, somebody still has to care for the child. Well, if you're a single parent, that's an even bigger challenge. Now we have, uh, I've actually just talked to a friend of mine that's a social worker and they have single men that are foster parents, but they have a good support system. One gentleman, the young man that is his foster child, his secretary is the support. Wow. So, I mean, that was, that was a surprise mm -hmm. to me. That was a mm -hmm. unique one. Support system people do go through the background checks and everything also, but they really do open that fully to be able to put the children into homes that are just safe and healthy with support. Of course. That is just so wonderful that, that you have decided that this is going to be one of the ways in which you are going to work in your calling. I think that that's wonderful. Now, we do need to take a break, but when we get back, I wanna ask you, how did you decide that this was something that you wanted to do? We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. So, Tanya, I wanted to ask you, how did you decide that this is what you wanted to do? How did you get involved in fostering? Well, as you mentioned at the beginning, I grew up with foster children going through my home. So mm -hmm. it's always <laughs> been in my life. There's really not a moment where I didn't mm -hmm. know about foster children since the age of four when my parents sat me down and said, you know, all of us down and said, we want to do this. What do you kids think? Right. Which is a vital thing and very important and very appreciated. But as the time went on, I wanted to write a book. I really felt like God was saying, write a book. And of course, the first book and the first thoughts I was going to write was not what God was wanting. So as he worked in me over the years, and then this book, my book was made and published, it became the catapult that has brought me into, oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. Helping healthy foster care homes, advocating, letting people know there is something that you can do to help in the foster care system. And it doesn't take long-term commitment. And that has just really ignited mm -hmm. the desire to get the word out. Mm -hmm. Now, how did your own children feel about their home becoming a foster home? Well, we didn't actually take foster children in. Okay. So, because in there again, the dynamics of your home make a huge impact. Mm -hmm. My husband traveled a great deal, and I homeschooled my children, and we moved from state to state. I see. Not really conducive dynamics to bring children in. Mm -hmm. It's almost as unsettled. The focus had to be on our children. However, we have taken in relatives, the young nieces, we've had um, young adults, his brothers, uh, his brother on one, on my husband's brother. We've also had other adults that God laid on our heart to live with us. So we've had people living in our home right. all along, mm -hmm. but we haven't had them through the foster care system. I got, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that we understand or has been rumored, so help clear this up, is that once the young person turns 18, they're no longer a minor, you're now technically an adult, and the foster care system just kind of boots them out. Is that true? It was, okay. it absolutely was. Mm -hmm. Today they have wonderful programs in place. I'm so excited that they've changed them. From the age of 17 to 17 and a half, after high school, a child, a foster child, has the opportunity to opt into different programs. One of them is called collaborative care, and that is a child living in a home from 17, 17 and a half to 21, the collaborative care home, the foster parent 
is receiving that monthly assistance to make that effective. At the same time, the college is paid. They do have to be in college. And the intention is to teach them adult life skills. So it's a wonderful mm -hmm. program. And there's also the Older Youth Incentive Program, which is paid college, or assistance, excuse me. I don't know if it's all paid college. <laughs> <laughs> assistance in college, finding housing, right. and finding employment. Mm -hmm. So now there are programs that foster children can opt into. Mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful thing to have. It absolutely, it absolutely is. Cause thinking that, oh no, on my 18th birthday, it's over, where am I going to go? I'm sure that was making a lot of, a lot of them just oh, anxious very and much. dread Panic. Turn 80, turning 18. Exactly. Yeah, right. you, you, you didn't want to look forward right. to doing that because you were uncertain of what your future was going to hold. Yeah. So that's, that's That awesome. high school graduation is a termination of life, practically, yeah. as you know it. Yeah. And that, that can be very, very scary and unsettling for a child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask about the support team for those who choose to um, make fostering a part of their life. You kind of mentioned before, mm -hmm. um, is there an official organization <laughs> that says, we help foster parents be their best? Or would you say that it's better to just make your own teams, just to make sure that you're able to talk about the ups and downs that happen with fostering. Actually, interestingly enough, is they, there isn't an organization that makes up your teams for mm -hmm. you. There are those that help in the continuing education that's required of foster parents. Mm -hmm. Each year, there's a certain number of hours. However, your support team is something that you make up because it is then your family, extended family, your secretary, mm -hmm. <laughs> as mm -hmm. the one gentleman did. Mm -hmm. It is somebody that you know that you can trust and then they go through the background check system mm -hmm. or the daycare system that you're going to use and then they're, and they're taking the paperwork that usually is already done in most of your daycare systems. They go through the same process of being background checked and cleared to have these children for their protection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone said, you know, that sounds awesome. I think that that's what I want to do. What should that person do as the first step in becoming a foster parent? Well, I would say pray. <laughs> <laughs> pray, talk to your spouse. If you're a couple, talk to your support team. Who you're going to have is support. Mm -hmm. Ask them if they're even interested in doing this. That's huge. Those are your major steps. And if you feel peace about becoming a foster parent or getting involved in even the short-term emer emergency care, respite care, any of those things, then definitely go on the application, the placement services application websites. Mm -hmm. And they vary by name. There's so many of them out there. Sometimes the best place is you call your social service agency, right. child protection. Mm -hmm. If you don't know where they are and you can't find them on the internet, I recommend you call the non-emergency police and they <laughs> can direct you and give you the number because they certainly know. Mm -hmm. And that's an excellent place to start. Applications are then put on, done online and okay. the process begins. Okay. Now you mentioned two additional phrases there that I'm sure perked someone's ears up and you said respite care and short term, I believe. Emergency can, short term. Emergency yes. short term. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Sometimes a person would like to help, but the whole idea of having a child full time in their house is just not possible. Mm -hmm. But what people can do is they can become an emergency care uh, home, which means a child coming out of the home that they're in, whether it's a guardian already or whether it is a, a home of their parents, then they are placed in your home for a short time while a long-term care is found. This could be anywhere from three days to maybe 10 days, two weeks, somewhere along that. The other is respite care. Now, respite care is literally giving the current foster parents a little bit of a vacation so they can regroup, regroup with their natural children if they're in the home, or say something comes up in the extended family and they need mm -hmm. to go address that. Mm -hmm. They know that the child is safe. They schedule it with the respite care people. It's a weekend, it's a week. 
kind of like having a little camp in your house. <laughs> it can be fun, and we encourage respite care. Make it fun. Mm -hmm. Make it VBS or something, you know. <laughs> but it can be a very ex uh, good experience. Of course. And a very needed for the current foster families. So of those course. are some of the short-term, smaller commitment time frames mm -hmm. that people can do. I love it. Well, Tanya Gregory, thank you so much for being on the show with me today. I think that um, it has just been eye-opening for so many people. You are giving such great information, but we need to go to break. Okay. We'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Tanya Gregory, and I have had the opportunity to talk to Dr. Angela about advocating for healthy foster care homes, and I really want to encourage you to do so. If you have always wondered, could I do it, would I do it, or maybe you know somebody that has, or like so many, you've had a negative feedback as to what's going on and what you have heard about foster care, I want to encourage you, take a look and see if my book can answer some questions that you might have. I was raised in a home that took in foster children. We had 22 children go through my life from my age of four to 16, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Was it always perfect? No, but it was the best life. It really made me who I am today. It really gave me a heart for people. I wanna encourage you that if you wanna learn, the stories in here will tell you how we got through it and the positive outcome because there is one if we try. You can check it out on my website, tlgministries.org. There's a tab that says bookshop. Take a look at it. You may find it more encouraging than you know. Take a look at also the web pages and the blogging that I'm doing. I hope it'll answer some questions. Feel free to ask me. My contact information's on my website, tlgministries.org. You'll notice it's written in a pen name because I wanted my family to have a chance to say they were okay with me talking about our life. God bless you. Welcome back. Tanya, now, if I understand correctly, there's something called CASA. Could yes. you explain a little bit more about that? CASA is a national program that's run through the court systems. It's actually separate from the court system, but used in the court system. You also may hear of it as guardian at, guardian at litem. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is you're a voice for the child. So you never take the child into your home or the children. They are abuse and neglect situations. What you do is you're appointed by the judge after you've gone through training for a child. And typically until the case of the child is closed, you are their voice. You have this training, you talk with the child, you also talk with your caseworkers. The opportunity that you have is to put this information together and help the judge hear from the child whether they think it's a safe situation to return home or not. And that is something that judges really appreciate mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's somebody that's not every day involved with the child. Right. It's, which would be the foster parent. It's not the caseworker that has so much on their plate, mm -hmm. but you're also adding that personal conversation with the child. Mm -hmm. Very, very vital piece and very needed, and they are shorthanded right now. Mm -hmm. So the child would be able to have conversation with that person the same way that they are with their foster care parent or with their caseworker. Right, and even a more awesome. knowing, it's something about that child knowing that this person is for me. Absolutely. They're for me only. Mm -hmm. They're my support. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't feel better talking to somebody that you know is on your side? Absolutely. And that's what a CASA at Guardian Ad Litem does. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Like you said, having that reassurance, yes. and especially if you've come from a situation where you felt that no one wanted to hear your right. voice, no one was on your side, right. and now you have someone who's willing to speak for you. That's yeah. awesome. It's amazing. That's awesome. It really makes a difference. I love that. And I don't think that people are as aware about that particular you part know, of the program. You're right, they're not. Mm -hmm. So many people have, that I've mentioned, have you ever heard of CASA? And they're like, 
what? <laughs> you know, they may have heard of guardian ad litem. Mm -hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, but aren't they lawyers? No. Right. <laughs> they right. really aren't. They're loving people mm -hmm. that want to help children, mm -hmm. which is kind of an amazing thing because when I first thought about it, I thought it was a paid lawyer and it is and not. And I think most people do. I not realizing so. that that is the way that they could actually help yeah. and be that advocate. Exactly. I, I love it. It's C-A-S-A. -A. Mm -hmm. Search it on the internet. You'll find out how to get in touch with people. Talk to them. They will talk to you, give you the boundary, the understanding in depth as to what it is. And if it's for you, you will be very glad you did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk a little bit about training. You did mention that thank goodness, there are the background checks that are done mm -hmm. to make sure that our children are going to be okay in the care of the adults that are assisting them. But when it comes to training, you can have a really great heart and still not know what you're doing. Yes. So what is the training like? It really varies. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably more than what I am even aware of, but when we were doing a program at our church, we were brought talking with DCS, mm -hmm. as it is called, was called then, and they have programs where foster parents come in and it's usually done in a volunteer setting. So a group of people volunteer to host it. Mm -hmm. And then they have a speaker that speaks about mm -hmm. child related things, parenting related things, health things. They have books that they read that they do a report on that then is turned in. And this is the things that maintain their license, just like so many ah, of your other careers. Mm -hmm. You have to have a certain amount every year. And it's not a large amount. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was either nine to 12 hours. Okay. And they give you how those calculate out, how many hours a book calculates for. Mm -hmm. And you put that together in your time. Maybe you get together once in a while. When they do the get togethers and they have a motivational speaker or someone that's helping to understand things, the adults also have a chance to talk to one another. Right. It's mm -hmm. a support system. Mm -hmm. And the kids are typically having a good old time someplace <laughs> else. <laughs> Being shared uh, mm -hmm. the idea that you're important too. Right. You're not a castaway. We care. Mm -hmm. Somebody cares for you. And that of course is helpful too. That is, that is awesome. Now, with that being said, someone may say, well, I'm not officially in the program yet, but there's an expo, there's a conference coming up within the next month before my paperwork goes through. Should they go on and be proactive and just attend? You know, I would say that question is best answered to the county or the placement agency they're working with mm -hmm. because Every area has a little bit of little difference. Bit difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say ask the agent that you're working with. Mm -hmm. That would be your contact's best place to get an answer. Smart advice. Yeah. Smart advice. Do what's required for your city yeah. or for your county. Right. I love that. Now, I don't want to necessarily put you on the spot, but I'm going to ask for <laughs> nuggets of wisdom. Okay. There may be someone who says, yes. I really, really want to be involved, and I want to know more, not just about the fostering, but about all of the programs that are available. Do you have two or three tips that you can share with someone? What should they do? Well, I would say first contact a placement agency. You know, they can answer the questions far better than anybody because as the laws and the programs develop and change, they're the ones that are in touch with all that information. So my encouragement to you would be, go check with who's in your area. Okay. Find out what is available. They typically know of all the different programs that are available for the foster care families. Mm -hmm. Another place would be if there's a foster family that you know of or that your kids know of in school. Talk to them and say, can I help? Can of I course. talk to you about what it's about? Right. What do you think of being a foster care parent? And That's always that. good, because it's first-hand awesome. information. I love it. Like I said earlier, great information. I'm so glad you were on the show. Thank you, Tanya Gregory. I'm glad I was here. Thank you for having me, Dr. Angela. Thank you. Now. I hope that you have enjoyed the show as well. I know that I have learned a great deal. Be inspired, be encouraged, be empowered. See you next time.